On today's episode of the E30 N54 swap, we're going to be extending the steering column. It involves a little bit of TIG welding. Why are we extending the steering column? Well, because we had to move the steering rack, the E36 M3 rack, just slightly forward to accommodate the oil pan and the new subframe that we put in. Let me show you why we had to move it over just a smidge and why it's not a big deal. For the fit onto the spline of the rack. So we're about maybe through two inches away. We're gonna have to extend this column. I'm gonna extend it right, right there. And all we're gonna do is basically cut it in half, put a pipe in, and we're gonna weld on either side and extend it the appropriate amount. Not gonna be a very difficult operation, but let me show you why bump steer or Ackerman is not affected by moving the steering column, by moving the steering rack just a slight bit forward. So the position of the steering rack in relation to the existing spindle location where the outer tie rod installs on is actually not changing dramatically. And that's the important word to use here is dramatically. When you do a really complicated engine swap like this, you want to make sure that the steering rack is as close to a stock location as possible to prevent issues resulting in Ackerman, which means that the steering column is too forward or backward compared to the, the, the spindle, or bump steer where the steering column where the steering rack is too high or too low. So in the location that we have here, we're going to end up being able to dictate the ride height of the car with our new coilovers that we're going to be getting. And, um, and we're going to be ensuring that at resting height that the car is in as straight of a line with the tie rods as possible. And that, and that up and down wise, that uh, forward and back wise, that the Ackerman is going to be maintained by maintaining a straight line from the steering rack out to the spindle location. Those are the real, those are the real reasons why we need to be very careful about the steering rack position. So now that I've explained why moving the steering rack slightly in the forwardmost direction doesn't affect Ackerman or bump steer, it's safe to measure the extension of the steering column that we need, make a tube, connect the two, extend it, and reinstall. All right, so here's the steering column it was after it was removed. This end here, this end here is the coming from the steer, go, going to the, from the steering wheel, and this one here is going to go into the rack. Um, all the U joints look good. No binding, no binding in the U joints, which is good. All right, everything looks good. The rubber coupler looks good. It could be upgraded, but I've decided not to upgrade it. It's just dirty, just dirty. It just needs to be cleaned. So we'll end up cleaning this thing before final assembly, um, but overall, uh, this is actually a pretty good steering column. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this right here, and we're gonna put a tube over it. And here's the tube. It's an aluminum tube, right? And that's an aluminum shaft. And we're gonna cut the tube, and we're gonna cut that, and we're gonna extend it two inches from where it is today. So we're gonna take a measurement from the U-joint to the steering coupler, and we're gonna just extend it two inches. So the distance between the center of the U-joint and the actual uh, end of the aluminum bushing is about, I don't know, four and one eighth inch. I need to extend it actually one and seven eighths, not a full two inches. It's not an exact science because it's a spline and it can move in and out anyway. This is um, actually a lot more forgiving, but this actually has to be right on the steering. Uh, the steering rack input needs to be go right through there. So this is actually exact, but this can slide in and out. So the four and one eighth that I already have plus the one and seven eighths equals, equals a six inch total distance between between this part of the U joint and the edge of the bracket. So let's cut this in half and let's get the tube cut as well to make that overall distance six inches.
All right, so I think I got it. You can see from here up to the top, it's about six inches. Like I said, it does not have to be an exact science, but I got it, right? And I, yes, I had to use an angle grinder, and that's because I don't have a lathe. And you probably don't have a lathe either, so you might end up having to angle grind it as well. Now, like I said, it doesn't have to be a perfectly shaved circular location for the, the pipe to go over because you're gonna end up welding it anyway. You need to make sure that it's straight enough so when you turn the wheel, the whole thing doesn't, you know, kind of go oblong on you. But that's really not going to be too hard with such a short shaft that we have here that, you know, when we, when we weld it on, it's actually going to be pretty straight. Um, and I'll show you that when we start turning the wheel and get it, get it reinstalled. But now it's time to weld. Now one thought that did occur to me is that this rubber bushing is going to get very hot and it's probably going to get destroyed as a result of me welding. So <clears throat> I have two options. The first of which is to either weld very slowly, just do tacks every couple of minutes. Eventually I'll finish the part without probably jeopardizing the integrity of this rubber bushing. Or I can just go to town on it and then destroy the bushing and then replace it with a poly bushing. That might be my better option. So um, I always have a backup solution. In case I destroy something, I always have some other thing to go back on. So we'll see what we do about this bushing, but um, I do wanna at least get a couple tacks on here at first, finish this up, and then get it reinstalled. Well, that was an absolute disaster. Didn't even get it to stick. Um, ruined the tip, got to replace the tip. Um, didn't even get it to weld. And I put a shit ton of heat into it. Um, all right, let me start over. Um, I'm gonna try putting a chamfer on the part to get a little bit better access. Um, but this thing needs to be cleaned up big time. Um, that was a big fail. All right, let's start over. Let's try it again. Alright, here's this shaft with the two tacks on each side. Got my hardware ready to go and I am ready for a prototype install. Remember this thing needs to be cleaned up, sandblasted. It appears that my welding did not compromise the U-joints or the rubber uh, coupler, which is good. Um, if I had to replace it, I could have, but I might get away with not having to do that. So I want to clean this all up. I already cleaned all the splines to make the installation really, really easy. So let's get this thing fitted up. Right, the steering column is pretty much installed. It is mock installed. I did not put the hardware on the top and the bottom. Um, because of the, the clearances that I have right now, it's just a little bit too difficult to get to. However, I confirm that the length is correct and that the spline engagement is good. I can now turn the wheel. Let's take a look at this. Go like this really quick. Okay, if you can see in there. It's easier. Left, right, left, right. So you can see that there's no binding. There was no noise. There was no issue when I went left. The steering rack easily went left, predictably. I think that this steering column is basically done. Just need to take it off and do a final weld around it, just like we need to do with all the other parts of the swap, like the subframe and the motor mount brackets. We need to finish all that. But consider this episode. <laughs> I'm so corny, I'm so stupid. I'm like, consider this episode completed. That's what I meant to say, but it just doesn't come out genuine. 
consider this episode completed. Like, yeah, the episode's complete, but I mean, how do I end an episode? I'm very bad at ending episodes. That's it. We're done.